If Kamala Harris gets four more years, she will de-industrialize the United States and destroy our country. We will become virtually a banana republic. We will be destroyed. Their plans are horrible. And if they wanted their plans, again, I say it all the time. I said it during the debate, where, by the way, we absolutely destroyed her, except, <laughs> except for the fakers on a microphone. Oh, she did very well tonight. She did very well. She did very well. She couldn't put two sentences together. Take a look at her answers. And it was three on one, too. ABC ought to be ashamed. It was three on one. And actually, it's also interesting because after that horrible situation, because it's the fake news all over again, fake news, you got a lot of them back here, by the way, but it's the fake news. But you know what? My numbers, look at the numbers today. The numbers are higher than they've ever been. We've never had numbers this good. So, so something happened that was pretty good. But it was, uh, it was interesting. I, I, I couldn't believe. I thought she was so bad. I came off that stage. I said, she was so bad. You know, one of the things, he's, he's the goat of debates. I said, is that a good thing or a bad thing? They said, greatest of all time, 21 debates. And I thought that was one of my best debates. But, you know, after they spin, they spin better than anybody. Well, I don't know if I thought he did too well tonight. And wasn't she really terrific? She didn't say anything. Except lies like a bloodbath, like Charlottetown. She lied. And you know what I'd say, just in finishing this topic? Because they'll say, oh, he fell into a trap. He talked to me. You know, when somebody says something bad about you, if you then, nobody else, this only happens to me, if I then refute them, Marjorie, if I say uh, that's not true, and just give a few seconds on, and people understand it, they say he fell into a trap. You know, if they say bad about me, I got to refute it. I do it quickly, but I refute it. As soon as I refute, oh, he fell into a trap. Why would I let her say something bad about me and let it stand out there? If I don't refute it, People are going to think it's true. These people are the worst. These people are the worst. But uh, it's been amazing what's been happening, and they're hearing what we're doing policy-wise, military-wise, border-wise, maybe especially border. You know, in 2016, I won on the border, and we fixed the border very quickly, and I was very proud of it. After that, nobody wanted me to talk about the border. They said, sir, it's been fixed. You know, I said, I want to talk about the border. They wouldn't let me, even though we got 12 million more votes in the following in 2020. We got 12. But listen, there is more enthusiasm now than there ever was for 2016 or for 2020 because of how bad they are, because of how good a job we did and how bad they are. Under Kamala, there will be no car industry, no steel industry, no significant manufacturing of any kind and we will be at risk of military defeat. You know that, right? A very simple fact is this. If you don't have steel, you don't have a military. And I'm not going to allow, and I said it before, and I'll say it again, and I got along with a great gentleman, Shinzo Abe from Japan. He was assassinated. He was a great gentleman. But I said, Shinzo, we have to change our trade deal. And he said to me, I knew you were going to come with that. I said, well, why did you know? He said, for 25 years, no American has said that to us. They got away with murder, and we changed the deal. And the deal that we now have is really good, but the deal we're going to have is going to be beyond belief with every, not just with Japan, with every company and every, every frankly, with their companies and with their nations. I'm not going to allow Japan to buy U.S. steel. I'm not going to let it happen. Seventy years ago, again, the greatest company on earth. Vote for Trump and you will see a mass exodus of manufacturing from China to Pennsylvania, from Korea to North Carolina, from Germany to right here in Georgia. They're going to come to Georgia from Germany and lots of other places. And no matter where I go, and I go to a lot of places, 
We're definitely outworking the opposition. She'll go to one place in three days. I say, why can't I do that? Yesterday, I was in Pennsylvania. I made five stops, five stops, three speeches. People say, how do you do it, sir? Then I said, where am I going tomorrow, sir? You're going to Savannah. Oh, what time are we leaving? Eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, great. I got home. You get home at 11, 12, 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning. When am I going tomorrow? I'm going to Savannah, Georgia. Well, I love you, but I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't mind leaving at 11 or 12 or 1. I'd be just as happy to be on. But, sir, uh, we're leaving. Sir, we're leaving at 9 o'clock. We're leaving at 8 o'clock. But it's okay. It's okay. It's worth it. But uh, look, the way I look at it, we have no choice. If we don't win this election, we don't have a country anymore. So we're going to work our asses off. We're going to work our asses off. We will bring back the American dream bigger, better, and stronger than ever before.